All right, what up, guys? I'm back. Uh, I dropped a video yesterday, last night. If you haven't checked that out, go check it out. Uh, it was it was dope. So y'all, let me know what y'all think on that video. You know, if if, if I gotta increase something on my videos, just let me know. But but yeah, we back today. And uh, yesterday we cleaned. Um, what did we clean? Oh, we cleaned the uh, carburetor and the reeds. All this right here don't really need clean right now. Uh, as I'm putting the motor together, I'll wipe it down, clean it, and, you know, check everything out. But today, I don't know if all of y'all uh, seen what's in this box. So today I'm going to go through this whole entire box and show y'all what's inside of it and what I have done to the case and all that and how I did it. So, therefore, something came in the mail today. Uh show you out the box but yeah. yeah but yeah it came in today so uh that's parts i think it's parts to the uh yz250 this one so like i said that bike's gonna be running up uh sooner than this one my other one uh this bike is gonna be running pretty soon too all it needs is rings the piston is brand new but the rings i guess I don't know if it was our fault or their fault that we bought it from, but it wasn't broken in properly. So I got to check the the uh, cylinder and the rings and the piston and the crank and all that. So to make sure everything's, you know, will still work good if I just replace the piston rings. So we're going to check all this stuff out in the box. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Peace. All right, guys, I'm back. I'm going to go ahead and get the box and uh, just show you all what I've been up to. Yeah. Okay. All right, first thing, obviously the carburetor I cleaned yesterday, so that's ready to be put in. All it needs is like hose lines and drain lines and all that. But reeds cleaned that yesterday as well. Um, all right, to the good stuff. Now. All right, this is the transmission. These are the shifting keys. That's what I like to call them because I don't know. They kind of look like keys, low key. Somewhat, I don't know, but yeah, definitely, definitely clean those. Uh, here's the drum, the shifting drum. Uh, I cleaned it, oiled it back up, so nothing. Will get rusty or anything, so that's that's clean. Here's the kicking gear. Uh, I cleaned it um, and sprayed uh, some lubricant in on the gear and on the spring and the shaft, so it won't rust. I cleaned that. Uh, oh, this is. Let's see. This is like a, um, a push rod. That goes uh, into your crank and into your um, it goes through your through your clutch basket and into your crank and this ball goes in front of it no behind it and uh, when you hit the clutch this is what pushes out your clutch in and out to engage it when you hit the uh, clutch lever so nothing really to that at all uh, transmission. I cleaned these things do it too. So. And if y'all ever take apart a transmission, it's it's not as hard as it looks. If if y'all don't know how to put it back together, all y'all gotta do is go on a route uh, Rocky Mountain ATV and look up your year and your model of your bike and it will come up with a whole diagram of uh, what you're missing and how it goes together in order. So I cleaned this with soap and water. And after you're done that, uh, dry it up with a heat gun and then spray some lubricant so it won't rust. But if you forget to do that, it's not a big deal. Even if it rusts, just make sure before you put it into the bike, spray some type of lubricant. Because uh, you don't want that motor to start up for the first time and not get oil right away. So how you prevent that, you lubricate it. Oh. And this is something that I use to uh, lubricate the stuff with. 
you open this cap and you put your type of uh, stuff in it. So it's an oil pump, which is pretty cool. Here's the other transmission. Right here. Pretty cool. Same thing that I did to the other ones that I just showed y'all. Do the same exact thing. And then just wrap them up, store it away until you get all your parts. That's the best thing to do. That's what I do. So. Uh, and this is a box. What's next? Uh, air filter. Regular twin air filter. Nothing special there. Here is a Y Uh This goes. It's. Uh, it goes to the connecting rod, uh, and then through your uh, piston rod that holds your piston to the connecting rod. So that's that. Here's the head. The head is like, oof, it's huge. It's definitely big. Bigger than I expected for sure. But only problem is I resurfaced all this so it's flat. Uh, has a little bit of st little bit of staining, but it's not bad. But the only thing is this right here. Something was bouncing around in there. And uh, come to find out, it was uh, it was the uh, not crank bearings. But uh, this is the uh, RM250. But if your if your crank has up and down play, like like that, it shouldn't have none. Side to side is cool, but as long as it doesn't like go all the way out, then side to side like that is cool. But if it goes like up and down, that's no good. So what happened was he turned the bike on, and these little needle bearings, one of them got out and was getting jumped around the piston. And the head as it was going up and down so that's that's what i think that happened because when i bought the bike he said that the uh crank needed to uh be redone so but yeah other than that it'll still work you can send this out to be uh resurfaced but it doesn't really matter uh it won't affect anything at all but uh yeah you can go in there with a low grid sandpaper and sand it out i might do that i don't know I don't know yet, but you could go in there and sand this out and make it as smooth as you as possible without making low and high spots. But other than that, that's basically it. On to the good stuff. All right, this is a Pro X clutch basket. I was gonna get Henson. I bought Henson before for a, uh, a CR uh, 250R. Uh, CRF 250R. Yeah, what? Well, yep. And I almost paid like a thousand dollars for it, so I was not about to pay that much for all that. So I was like, "Hell no!" So yeah, shows you how to do it. It's, it's pretty simple. So yeah, this is a. It even gives you a bit to take off to put on the little screws. That's that's pretty dope. Henson don't even come with that. I think it comes with a. Um, little allen key but this comes with a bit huh. and the bit actually has like a little screw where you can change the tips that's pretty cool i like that but yeah here's the here's this right here it's pretty nice it's lightweight too it's not heavy at all and the reason why i wanted to replace it is because i'm gonna show y'all right now The reason why I want to replace it is because if you see these little grooves, that's no good. You could go in there and grind it down a little bit, but not too much where these get so thin because they will break off. So you just grind it down a little bit and you can still use it. I might do that for now so I can save this so when it really needs it, but I might just replace it before one of these actually breaks and bounce around in the transmission or something. So, and all you got to do to replace it is you grind down these little uh, tabs and the gear should come off and it goes right into here, right into there. So, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's it for the new uh, clutch basket. It's pretty simple. I paid... 
Damn, how much I pay for this? Um, I think I got a receipt too. I don't think it was that expensive. Not ex not as uh, expensive as um, uh, Henson. It was one sixty. That's how much I paid for it. So, so yeah. So if y'all want one of these for any bike, just look up uh, Pro X Clutch Basket. So it's a it's lightweight too, so it's less stress on your motor. So that's definitely something to uh, look at as well. Alrighty, let me put this back. Alright. Alright, now to the good parts. Most of y'all have seen this. This is the side case. I went ahead and redid this myself. Not bad at all. If you do it right, the paint will stick. It won't chip at all. It's just how many coats and how long you let it cure for. So, but yeah, here it is right here. I have a little chip right here because I, I put a sticker on. And I want to go peel it off for some reason. And it definitely took off a little a little part right here. I don't know if you can see it. But yeah. And all I did to do this, it's not as hard as it looks. Grab a Sharpie and color that in. And then clear coat it. If you clear coat it, nothing will take it off. But make sure it's high temperature clear coat so it can take the temperature without peeling off. Because this does get pretty warm when you run the motor. So, other side. But yeah, as you can tell, there was some uh, rubbing right here. Stuff was bouncing around, but there's no hole or nothing. Nothing's going through at all. So, I put uh, water and uh, oil. Uh, first, I tried water. It's a lot thinner than oil. And if water's not going to go through... Oil is not going to go through, but I checked anyways, and uh, it definitely didn't go through. So, so yeah, that's uh, that's it for that. <clears throat> now for the case. Here's the main part. This is the case. Um, the case was not like this at all. Um. It was uh it wasn't as dirty as the RM250, but it was definitely not as clean as this at all. So I went ahead and cleaned it, uh, wired wheeled it. I mean not wired wheeled. Uh, I used like a scratch right pad on a on a drill or something. Yeah, you can put it on a drill or a table grinder and just you know get at it, and it, it works pretty good. As you could tell, I spent more time on this side than I did this, but I didn't want it to come out perfect. I just wanted to see what the wheel pad would do, and Next time when I do it again, I'm going to go ahead and stick it with that. But yeah, had a little bit of a, I think the chain popped at least one time. So it's kind of hard to find uh, case cases for this. I uh, bought this side for the case. I'll show you why in a minute. The bearings has been all replaced. So that's new. Um... And if uh, it's kind of hard to look for uh, bearings for your whole entire motor. Well, I had trouble, but all you got to do is go to Ro uh, Rocky Mountain ATV and they will hook you up. Usually they do uh, deals too, like 20% off, 50% off. So it isn't that much at all. There's the other side. You know, nothing really to it. But yeah. And the reason why I bought this side of the case is because... Uh, it has JB Weld right here, which I don't like at all. See, it doesn't leak. Whoever did it did a pretty good job. They did it clumpy, but it doesn't leak. I put water on the opposite of the case and held it there for about like 10, 20 minutes and nothing went through. So it's not going to leak. I doubt it's going to leak, but this is where the shifter shaft goes in time when I'm shifting and stuff, this will get loose and then... That's a whole nother trouble that I got to deal with. So I bought it so uh, I can replace it when when it does go. So, so yeah, not bad. The motor's going to run really good. So, so yeah, definitely, definitely going to be a nice bike for sure. So, uh, 
can't wait to kick it that first time and start it. So, so yeah, that's it for everything that uh, I uh, basically refurbished. So, uh, so yeah, that's it for that box. Now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and open the box that just came in. So yeah, stay tuned. I'm gonna put this all away and then get back at you. Look at that. Not bad. See, you can see a little bit. See right there. But yeah, it's not bad. I don't. I don't really care. It's not gonna bother me. But yeah. But yeah, it's not. It's not as hard as it looks. But if you don't know what you're doing, but you want to take your bike apart, all you gotta do is if you got storage in your phone or your camera, record yourself doing it. Take it apart, record yourself as you're doing it, and then if you want to know how to put stuff back together, just do the opposite. Rewind it, and it shows you putting stuff back. So it's not that hard, but if uh, if you want to take it apart, all you got to do is take it apart and put everything in a box. So therefore, you won't lose anything. And if you don't know how it goes, at least 9 out of 10, you have everything in that box, and it won't be lost. So that's what I would do. That's how I started. Uh, I started from my dad showing me, and... I progressed, I guess. So, yeah. But, yeah. And if y'all want to know, like, a history about me, like, how I started and what made me start riding bikes, just let me know. And, bro, I'll definitely sit down and talk to y'all for hours. I don't even care for real, for real. But, yeah. Stay tuned. I'm going to uh, put this all back in the box and then uh, pull out the new package that just came this morning. So, yeah, y'all stay tuned. Peace. All right, this is what came in today. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this is definitely parts for the YZ250. Well, 290. So let's get into this. If y'all want to know who does this stuff for me, uh, right here, I'm about to show y'all. Uh, right here. I send it out to uh, New York, and this is their stuff right here. So, go check them out. All you got to do is look that up on uh, eBay, and uh, his uh, link to it will come up. And, uh... So far, from my dad doing it, um, when he bored out the uh, CRF uh, 250, uh, I mean not the CRF, the uh, LT 250R, uh, so far it's been running pretty good, so that's, that's good. Ooh, definitely is. Alright, what do I want to check first? Alright, this is the piston that I bought before I sent it out. And uh, I bought the piston. It was a hundred and something. Uh, this is a 40, 40 uh, over piston. So 40 millimeter or something like that. I can't remember. Something like that. So yeah. There's the information on it. Nothing crazy. Here's the piston range. The Wisco. And it's a Wisco piston, obviously. Here's the rod. Uh, here's the clips. Or cotter pins, whatever you want to call them. Here's the piston. Right here. So this thing is huge. It's definitely big. So yeah, there's not really two. I paid like I can't remember. It's like it's, it's in the hundreds. I can't remember what I paid for it. But it was it wasn't that much. Alright, down to the crank. Here's the crank. Uh, the crank is OEM, so factory crank. Uh, and this is a hot rods connecting rod. So yeah, uh, I paid 160 for the rod. Or 200, something like that, I can't remember. But it's a hot rods connecting rod. Um, and it seems like it did a pretty good job. 
No up and down at all. Side to side. Barely. Barely. Yeah. Somebody called me. Uh, so yeah, barely no side to side at all, and up and down. Uh, side to side is cool, as long as it doesn't have that. As long as it doesn't have like crazy. You you know when it's too much. So yeah, that's the crank. So yeah, check him out, man. He does so far. He does a good job. I'll put that back in here. And this is the cylinder, and he even gives you a step by step breaking process if you're like new to like breaking in motors and stuff here's this thing right here if i want to go check them out see so yeah go check them out there's nine steps <laughs> but yeah go check them out he does a good job so here it is right here look at that that is huge bro that's crazy look at that you can see the cross hatching right here he definitely did a, a really good job this when i bought it had a, like a, a scar uh right here it was coming up from right here but nothing now so he does it he, he did a pretty good job and he poured it the uh power valve as well because uh he needed to trim out the power valve to order to fit the bigger piston and it seems like he did a he did a good job if y'all can see so yeah not bad he definitely did a really good job so, can't wait to put this motor together all i'm waiting for right now all i'm waiting for right now is uh Gaskets, the complete motor, seals, and uh, crank bearings. And that's it. And then the bike would uh, be running. So, yeah. Uh, I might be going out riding today. So, y'all probably see some footage of riding. This is not only going to be the only thing. The weather kind of sucks. It's kind of, it kind of uh, says it's going to rain. So, I'm going to try to get some good footage for y'all. So yeah, there's the unboxing of what came in the mail today. So stay tuned and uh, I'll get back at y'all once I'm doing something else. Basically, I might be riding. So stay tuned and I'll get back at y'all. Right, I'm right. back. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't make a riding uh, video. Um, uh, I actually did go riding, but I, actually, I accidentally forgot my uh, my phone. And plus, it, we didn't really ride. We actually sat there waiting for another friend. Uh, so we're probably gonna ride tomorrow. So we're definitely gonna see some riding footage tomorrow. So this might be a short video So if anything uh, tomorrow It's gonna I'm gonna drop another video I'm gonna drop this one tonight, but I'm gonna drop another video and hopefully it'll be nothing but riding Hopefully if the weather's good, but if it's raining, it's kind of hard to do content in the rain So all I can do is chill in here and you know work on the bikes, but But yeah, we left off I uh, showed y'all everything and what's came in the mail today uh, the crank uh, has a, uh, <clears throat> go check these guys out, man. They do an awesome job. And, uh, they do uh, single crank repairs, uh, and they do any cylinder, single cylinder. Oh, no, no. They do up to two cylinders a piece. So, like a Banshee, if it's uh, dual cylinders, they can do that. But any more of that, they don't, they don't do. But this rod, I mean, this crank is all redone. Uh, it's balanced. It has a hot rods connecting rod in it. So no up and down play. So yeah. And the uh, sleeve. It's uh, honed and bored out. Uh, so it's a uh, 290. Here's the piston. It's a wide scope piston. So, so yeah. But as we were. As I left off over this. My friends came over. <clears throat> and we actually um, did some stuff to Adam's bike. And check this out. This thing looks sweet, bro. This thing looks nice. <laughs> he definitely looks good. I'm not gonna lie. But yeah. That's all nice. It is a 07 uh, RM 
125. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a, a clean bike, for sure. Uh, it has a brand new top end in it, a Wisco piston, uh, piston rings. It has an aftermarket crank. Uh, I don't know what it is yet. I hope it's not Wisco. Um, so it's Wisco sucks ass, but yeah. Uh, but yeah. We definitely did that. So we uh, rebuilt it, we rebuilt it, put it back together, and uh, it starts when you bump start it, but it won't start when you kick it, and it has it has good compression too. Like, look at that. Like, it has a lot. On camera, it's kind of hard to tell, obviously, but it does have compression. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, what y'all gonna do, well, watch me do, um, as you can tell, see, we place all the gaskets right here and the, on the, on the other side. So what I'm going to do is take the carburetor apart and clean it. I'm going to clean it as best as I can, get it running where if I kick it, it'll start without bump starting because for real, for real, you're not supposed to bump start dirt bikes. That's why it has a kicker on it. Uh, the only electric start and kick bump start. No. So all my bikes are going to run only from kick starting. But we're going to get going on this bike right now. So my friend has a bike to ride. But yeah. But yeah. Let's get to that. Uh, what can I set y'all down at? So yeah. All right. Stay tuned. We're going to get this carburetor out. Preach. I went ahead and took the carburetor off. It's uh, right over there on the bench. Uh, I'm sorry, Adam. <laughs> I took it off. Um, uh, this was definitely a pain getting on. And I know it's going to be a pain getting back back on. Uh, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> don't worry, I'll put it back on, though. We were struggling getting this thing on. But it needs to be done uh, if you want to run a bike. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, go back to the bench and uh, break it apart. See, I hope it's clogged in it. I hope... Uh, I hope all the jets are clogged because if that if it's clogged then we know that's one of the biggest problems of it not starting now if it's not clogged and it's fucking clean as hell in there uh then then we have a bigger problem on our hands so hopefully not hopefully it's not a uh, that big hopefully it's definitely uh clogged in there so yeah there we go so yeah <clears throat> so yeah we're gonna go ahead and break this off hopefully no um none of the bolts are stripped i hope not because that's a pain man Fucking hose lines are dirty as hell. Go ahead and clean up. These bolts are a little stripped too. I don't even think they even. I don't know. It looks like the this one's good, that one's good, but this one it looks like they took these off, went to go to this one, and it didn't want to come off. So hopefully they just you know put the two screws back on and didn't never clinked it. Hopefully, I don't know. But, yeah, this is definitely stripped. <laughs> yeah. No go. Let me see this one. Yeah, no. Let's see if we can find the good uh, screwdriver. I know I had one. We was using it earlier to put Adam's bike back together. I gotta get some screwdrivers, bro. I really barely got any. For real, for real. Damn, I had a good screwdriver. It was like a flathead and a screwdriver in one. What happened to it, man? Um, let me serve. Let me serve. Oh, man. Alright, I'll be back, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, 
look for uh, a good screwdriver. So I'll be back. Hey guys, I'm back. I couldn't find a screwdriver other than this one. And uh, this is kind of beat up. So I built this. Should work, right? What we should do is just hit them a little bit. Once you like hit them. <laughs> Got that one. Got that one. Hopefully this one comes out. I don't think this one's gonna come out. Oh, it might. Yep, it's out. Voila, now we can use this retarded screwdriver to just unbolt them. I hope this is like, you know, clogged. So we can have a running bike, hopefully. <clears throat> well, we know the bike runs. That's good. We know that. Now we just gotta how to keep it running. So far, not good. Don't look that dirty in here at all. So we shall see. You know. This one, I can see straight through. See? See straight through that, so that ain't dirty. What is? Hopefully this is the problem, bro. I swear. This flow bow is kind of. No, that's good. I hope it's this. It's usually this that keeps it running. It's kind of gritty in there, bro. Oh shit. Yep. Can't see a thing. Let me see. Yep. <laughs> can't see nothing. This jaw. See how you can. Can't see nothing through there. This one. You can see through. See? You can see it. But this one, nah. Can't see nothing. So, what we're gonna do is grab some WD 40. And these. Now, if you don't have this. All you need is a wire bread from like um, from like a loaf of bread. That wire, all you do is peel it back, and uh, it um, has a thin metal wire that actually works a lot better than these big old things. But I use what I got on me. Grab the thinnest one. I might even use. I might even have to use a wire bread because uh, I don't think I have one just this thin. Nope. Wire bread it is. See? You peel it back and it has all this, so. Wire bread it is. Go ahead and do that. What y'all think? Y'all think it's gonna run after this? I don't know. Hopefully. Hopefully it runs. I hope it does. Break it in tomorrow, do that the whole day, uh, and then uh, do a riding video tomorrow. Hopefully, that that's my plans for tomorrow, guys. Riding. Still dirty, bro. Ooh. WD-40 numbs your lips. Like when you, like... Get some on your lips. It's kind of feels weird. So, yeah. Um, hopefully this works. Or my nails are so dirty. That's what comes with working on bikes. So if you work on bikes, you can't skip a shower day at all. Damn, man. It's definitely... A little gritty in there, bro. Almost lost it. So after this, I'll just put it all back together. Because I'll check the uh, float and stuff. Bro, it's still clogged, bro.
Bro, definitely you're still clogged. What's the problem? Where's that wire bird at? Oh, here he goes. John thin as hell. Okay, we getting somewhere now. I can see through it a little bit now. A lot better than what it was. That looks way better now. Hopefully y'all can see through it. See? Now you can see through it. It's real small. But you're supposed to see all the way through it. So. This one's up better. I mean, this one's bigger, so you're going to see a lot more through it. But this is the, the low end needle. Or the low idle needle. I don't know what the hell it's called. The float's not stuck, so I don't think I got to take that apart. So I think that's exactly what it was. And this is, this goes here. So that would definitely prevent it from starting. We shall see. Hopefully it's that, man. Watch it not be that. My luck. <laughs> I'm not even going to tell Adam. So if I put it back together, I'm not even going to tell Adam that, uh, I'm not going to text him and be like, yo, bro, I got your bike running. It was the carburetor. It's dirty. I'm just going to wait until they come over tomorrow and uh, we're gonna pull it out and see if they watch my video see if they say like uh yo bro thanks for getting my bike run running or something <laughs> see if they watch my video we're about to see if they faithful subscribers or youtubers whatever they're called i think it's subscribers but yeah <sighs> now it's time to Torques these things down into spec. Spec. Specs. It's eight pounds. That's eight pounds. That's eight pounds. <laughs> so, you know. So, yeah. That should be it. Hopefully, it's that, man. I uh, hope it runs after this. So, we're going to go ahead and put this back into the bike. That wasn't long at all, for real, for real. It's kind of easy. Oh, so we're gonna go ahead and put this back in the bag. Let me put it right here. Put this right I'm here. back. Uh, sorry, the camera shut off. I'm running out of storage. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the carburetor on without uh, recording. And then I'll get back to y'all once I'm kicking it and trying to get it started. So peace. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, I put it in. Uh, I had to adjust this uh, screw too, because I know if it does start, it's going to idle way too loud, which that's what it was doing. So I went ahead and uh, screwed that down. Bro, I hope this is the problem. Like, for real. So far, it's not leaking either, so. Let's see. I fixed it. There you go. <laughs> not bad. I was expecting it not to start, bro. That's good. I went ahead and bent this boot up so I can have room in here. Back. But, uh, yeah. uh, I got the bike started. Uh, my phone keep running out of storage. So hopefully I fixed it. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to call it a day. Uh, thank you all for watching. Make sure you all comment, write, and subscribe. 
Uh, stay tuned for the next video. Peace.